welcome back to my channel, Divinely Guided Tarot. If you're new here, my name is Angel and I'm here to bring you another general collective energy reading. This message could be for all signs, so please remember to take only what message resonates with your particular situation. Leave the rest behind. And as always, guys, thank you so very much for everything that you do to help this channel grow. It is greatly appreciated. Um, we're going to go ahead and... Take a few minutes to call in the Holy Spirit. Um, welcome into this message. The Holy Spirit, please come through. Please shield, guard, protect this portal while I channel divinely guided messages for my beautiful subscribers. Please help me with the messages that they need to hear at this divine right time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. So I want to talk about Friday's energy. And I'm recording this on Thursday night before Friday. And I want you to have the best possible day that you could possibly have. So I'm hoping that when you see this on Friday that you all are feeling your absolute best because you deserve it. Truly, you do. And that is my intention for this message this evening. So Holy Spirit, come through and tell me a little bit about what my collective can expect for Friday. What can they look forward to? They can look forward to this individual being put to shame, okay? All right, false person, you ain't going to step in front of my collective's way. So we can look forward to a mature man exposing a false person, okay? So this may be a fatherly figure. This could be a grandfather. This could be an uncle, brother, a very strong masculine energy, whether they're coming up to you in spirit or in the flesh. And to be very honest with you, I feel like we have a spirit guide coming out. Maybe like a father, maybe somebody who's passed on, who's just putting some strong energy, kind of warning you that somebody is coming up for you on Friday. Now we kind of picked up on this earlier today whenever we pulled out that uh, the last message. So it feels like we're kind of going in um, the right direction here. So I want you to pay attention. If that last message resonated with you, um, this is this is going to be the confirmation. Um, if if not, then this might not be your message. So check out the other one before you check out this one. Now I have a mature man coming up in spirit. Maybe somebody who has passed on, um, ready to expose who this false person is. I like that. I like that your family is coming through, even from the beyond. And we're talking like somebody who was very, very close to you. Um, somebody, I don't know, I'm getting the name Paul. I'm getting the name Pop, like P-O-P. -P. Like somebody called their, their grandpa Pop. Yeah, maybe in your community there is some gentleman named like Sir or Walter or Pop or Jones, you know, I mean, I feel like it's like one of like those cool cat names, you know, I feel like the elderly man right there is symbolic to how cool he is in this community. He's the one sitting at the door, finding out who you are and everything about you. You could have known him for 39 years. You could have known this person and they're no longer here on this planet with us. They're in the next phase of life. But they're still reaching back from the beyond to aid you, to help you, to intuitively, you know, flag you of what's going on. This person loved you. This person loved you in this, in this life. And they respect you. And you respected them. And you love them too. I feel like there was a very special bond. But bad health is being wished upon you. This false person is wanting to make you ill, make you sick, or put you in a state of spiritual bad health. That feels a little bit more accurate. Um, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt until we dive in a little bit deeper. Um, but I feel like they wanted your spiritual health to dwindle. I feel like they wanted you to be knocked down a peg. Like, oh, you're too perky, you're too happy, you're too this, you're too that. So this false person is being exposed for their weaknesses because of what they are wishing and willing on your life. Now, Pop over here, or Paul, or Rudy, Rudy, that's cool. Um, I don't know, so this, this mature man over here, this grandfather-like figure, 
He's showing me images of the TV show, and some of you may know it, some of you may not. I was a, a military kid, so I grew up watching like Armed Forces Network, overseas, you know, television shows and movies were a little outdated in Germany than it was to the United States, so it was a little bit different for me growing up, but if you remember that TV show, MASH, okay, they're showing me um, that that actor that played the character Radar, and he was an intuitive um, individual. Like, we would have called him a light worker. We would have called him psychic. He had this uncanny ability to sense an incoming chopper, an incoming helicopter full of individuals who were being life flighted down to this MASH unit, this army uh, surgical tent, right? So he could tell when there was incoming, um, you know, helicopters coming in. That's amazing. And that was a very valuable place for him to be placed. I feel like your pop is like radar coming through, letting you know that he's sending you as much aid as possible to give you as big of a head start on this as you can. So... Thank you, Pop. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, no problem. You are the privileged lady. You're the princess. They're saying, oh, this is so sweet. And I mean, and I'm sorry. I don't mean to giggle or laugh, but I, I'm smiling right now because I lost my grandfather this year. Um, and it was, it was hard. Well, I mean, I lost him, I guess, going on a year now. It just feel, it doesn't feel real yet because, you know, I see him all the time. So. It's not like he's gone. It's just he's not here for me to hug him. He looks healthier now, but he used to call me little nicknames and stuff. And the way that this grandfather-like figure for you calls you princess, it just, it makes me blush. It makes me remember my grandfather. My grandfather called me kiddo. And I had another grandfather, wonderful, both of them wonderful men, another grandfather who called me turkey. <laughs> You know, I'm just so different. But listen, I feel like this this intuitive message that you've been receiving from him, um, there's a little bit more to it than just um, I'm watching out for you and keep your eyes open and you know don't don't travel alone at night and you know use the buddy system. This is a very militant style of of energy. I feel like he was very structured. He's not a person to take risks, and I feel like maybe you are. So I feel like some of what he's kind of pushing through right now on the table is just forgive him. It's it's parental love, you know. I know better than you. I can see what's coming for you. I don't want you to have to experience something like this or that. So forgive him. <laughs> he said... You are as bold as brass, as bold as brass. And what he means is that you are as bold as some of the, the heaviest ranking military leaders. And they call them like top brass and stuff, I guess. So definitely a military individual, somebody who worked for maybe the FBI, CIA, um, somebody big in government. So... I feel like you are the intuitive antenna. You know, he's that radar figure helping you and communicating with you from the beyond about what this person is actually going to, to do for you. This person is paying for spell work. And that's very strong coming out in the beginning of the reading. And then the spell work, paying for spell work, paying for readings is coming out here just to back it up. Guys, whatever is being done in the dark, is going to be exposed in the light. And when the light comes in and shines in, it is going to show that that individual is receiving karma. So I want you to not worry. This person cannot hide in the shadows and they can't wear their masks. Okay, we can see you talking behind your fan. We know that you don't like my collective. Pop, why? Oof. Oof. You make them sick. You make the karmic sick. They found out something about you. Yeah. Look at that. 
they found out something about you that they that they wish that they didn't. I think they got a glimpse of what's coming in for your life. And they see a lot of blessings coming into you right now. They see how happy you are and it fires them up. They're probably a fire sign. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Maybe they're 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 quick to judge, quick to quick to accuse. But more importantly, they found out that you really are who you say you are. Your happiness is not something that is faked. I feel like like they were like, "Oh, you are so fake." Like she's behind this She's talking behind this fan right now to this other gentleman in the background, right? And what I can hear her saying is she thinks that she's an earth angel. Precious thing. She really does think that, like, that's the kind of talk that I'm hearing. And they believed that you were a suck up, a kiss up, you know, somebody who... who was only sucking up to somebody to get something from them. They spoke ill against you that your happiness and your kindness was just fake and that you're a very fake person. <laughs> the false person saying that your happiness was false and fake. They're just they're just lying. They think they're pure, but they're not. And you're like, I forgive you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the proof is in the pudding, sweetheart. <laughs> go go sit on the porch if you can't hang with the big dogs. Because here's a big dog right here. Somebody who knows their energy and walks in it confidently. You are genuinely a happy or positive person. People could accuse you of being fake or nobody could be that happy. Nobody could be that joyful. Nobody could be that innocent. Well, they're starting to understand that you 100% are. They found out information forbidden knowledge that they should have never had access to but they were tested with a glimpse into your life but what they didn't know is when they disobeyed God and they looked at information that did not belong to them in their Akashic library do you know what happens to individuals who do that they're cursed with insanity and let me explain this a little bit more when you are a chosen one Everything about you is protected. All of you. Everything from the, the tiniest hairs on your head to the tipsy, tipsy tips of your toes. And the aura surrounding you six feet in diameter, right? Let me tell you something. Your protection extends to those who are testing or being tested with your energy in the veil. So there are traps that are laid for the enemy. If somebody takes a peek into Pandora's box, what's going to happen, right? You are that hope in that box. Now, what happened in that movie, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? Let's go Indiana Jones here on you. I'm going to pull some old school on you here, and it's fun, right? Do you remember at the very end of the movie when the Nazis were getting ready to open up the crate with the Ark in it? And he says, shut your eyes, don't look at it. Don't look at it, Marianne. Like you don't want to look at it because those who understand that knowledge will be cursed with insanity or killed, right? They're going to be cursed with this looping understanding that you are chosen, they were wrong, and that they're going to have to watch you succeed and win and that there's nothing they can do to stop it. And they're also going to live with the shame knowing that they could have been right beside you the entire time but they chose jealousy and they chose a different path and they regret it that's going to be something that they will never forget how they ripped the wings off of an earth angel Ooh, yeah our wings we, we grow them back i've had mine ripped off many times many times and you know what god grows them back fluffier whiter there's less brown streaks in them like hawk feathers. There's more white in them every time. I love it. And I feel like every time I pass some of those tests, like you are passing your tests, it's, it's a reward in itself. Like I survived. So I want you to remember that collective. You, you survived. And you're continuing to survive because this is your secret weapon. 
your high vibing, pure state of energy that you're exuding right now. Forbidden knowledge. See, we are going to always be tempted to look at things and information that is not our own. As long as you stay grounded on your path and you don't deviate from that, from your spiritual beliefs, from the instructions that God puts on your heart, nothing is going to harm you. It's when you deviate from that path and God can't protect you when you walk off the path that you have to really start to worry. You know what I mean? You have God's protection and covering over you. They say that prophetesses and prophets that we should always keep our head covered, especially when we are prophesying. Because if we don't, our gifts can be compromised. Our gifts can be tampered with. I go a step further. I am always shielded, covered, and guarded. I know who I am. And I want to introduce that understanding to you as well. You don't have to cover up your head with a cloth. I want you to be confident in understanding and knowing that your relationship and your will for your angels to shield you, cover you, guard you, and protect you. Asking the Holy Spirit before you do your works. Like I pray before I, I do each one of my messages. I pray and I ask the Holy Spirit to shield me, cover me, guard me while I channel the message. So I'm covered, not just my head, I'm covered my whole body. And I have two gigantic angels hovering their wings over top of this table in my head every single time. So don't give in too much to superstition, um, things that maybe you've heard that other people do. Be confident in your beliefs with God. Be confident that you know, maybe you don't have to light a candle and do a return to sender ritual because you know deep down in your heart that all you have to do is put that intention out there and it is done. That's how much God loves you. You're starting to, to break out of old stereotypes, old stigmas, old superstitions, and you're starting to understand your true power. And it has nothing to do with a hybrid belief that's like somebody else's belief. This is about you and God. And how you and God communicate together is private between you and God. Who are we to say that your relationship with God is wrong? Because it doesn't follow the same way my relationship with God is. Everybody's relationship is like a fingerprint. It's special. It's unique. Because we are special and unique. And we are all separated from God. We are a reflection of who God is. And God wants to know us on a personal level. Think of your body here like an avatar. Right? Think of it like an avatar in a video game. How many of you play video games? Or set up your character to look like who you want to look like? confident, fun, flirty, beautiful hair, lipstick, eyeshadow, you name it. I want my jawline to be a little bit tighter. I want my waist to be a little bit slimmer. I want cool clothes on my character. Guys, I could spend hours creating characters on like an Xbox game, right? So listen to me, listen to me. When you start treating your relationship with God like a personalized relationship, and that you understand that God and you are going to understand things that nobody else is going to understand. It makes it special and it is special. I really hope and I pray that each of you get to know God for who he is and who he reveals himself to you to be. So don't be afraid to reach out and talk to him because right now you're at the perfect primed state to be able to to ex excel in this next phase of life like this person can't touch you you're vibing at too pure and too high of a level but they are going to try they may try to come at you with certain energy maybe um trickster type of energy maybe trying to come to you like an anointed person or as 
um, somebody who's seeking help, that's it. Somebody who's going to ask you for help because they're struggling. And I thought that you were you were a light worker. I thought that you were an earth angel. I, I thought it was your duty to to protect, shield, guard, and protect others. And is it your service to mankind? Well, I need help. Blah blah blah. They may come to you asking for help, but something inside of you is going to scream like, ooh, like I don't know. Like you're gonna feel almost anxious when this person comes to ask you for help. Eight, the year of karma we are in. Um, I, I don't like this. Because this person is assuming that you're dumb and gullible. And that you will never turn away a person who's asking for help. Let me tell you differently. I've refused to give readings to people before who have paid me. Because God told me a uh, uh, no. They're, they're, they're no good. They're coming at you asking for help, but what they really want is to steal your energy from you and they want to hurt the person that they're asking about. So that's why they're spying. Like some people will come up to me, um, not, not, this doesn't happen all the time, you guys, but every once in a blue moon, I'll get a person that'll, that'll try, you know, and then God will reveal the deception in the dark and then I will be like, nope. Here's your money back. I refuse to give you service. I'm sorry. Um, God will not permit me to, to channel for you. I, I, I hope and wish you all the best in the future. You know? Please don't come back. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want that. So we're talking about wolves in sheep's clothing. I want you to know that God is with you. God is not going to allow you to be deceived. Scripture coming to mind with this card and this particular message, no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name because you are always going to be that chosen one who was set apart from everybody else. Okay? This is you. You were meant to be showcased as a star, as a prophet, as an anointed being, as somebody who was privileged and you are the princess. It's like you're, you're God's little princess. You're God's precious baby girl or baby boy. But I'm, I'm seeing princess. And they're saying princess. Like I said, this is, a, this is a pop here. You have a royal energy. Your pop was assigned to protect you or to guide you or to be there to support you. I feel like you have flashbacks of your times with pop or Paul or Ringo, or Star, or whatever his name is, but he seems like a cool cat like that that used to listen to records. Like, I feel like he liked the Beatles, you know? I feel like um, he tried to educate you on what he considered to be good music, and when you were a kid or when you were younger, you were like, that's not good music, let me show you good music, and then you would pop in, like, Sugar Ray. <laughs> you know? Like, I feel like you're in that age group, maybe your pop was... Just a little bit older, you know. He fought in a war or two, you know. So we have the hangman energy coming out here. And I feel like God wants you to remember that to be slow to speak is the best course of action in this, this time frame. So what you can look forward to is when this individual comes looking for you. When they say something and your spirit is shrieking at you and you're like, man, I don't really want to turn somebody away who's asking for help. But God, I know that if I, I open up that door that it's only going to cause me problems. Take a minute. Surrender to God's judgment. If God tells you not to communicate with that individual, do what you got to do. But don't respond so quickly and agreeing to anything or not agreeing to anything, you are not on a time limit to respond to anybody's demands or request for your aid. Okay? They came to you. They can wait when you are ready. You should never rush into decisions without consulting God first. I make that a priority. Like if, if I feel uncomfortable in any way, that's the Holy Spirit in me warning me. 
warning, Will Robinson, warning, warning, you know, like I, I, I get that. I really do. And I feel like you are really sensitive to the, that inner warning system that you've developed over your course of trials and tribulations where you fell down and you had to get back up again. And then you fell down and you chumba wumba back up again, right? I feel like all of the lessons that you've learned have brought you to this point of maturity, adulthood. Again, very mature energy here. And a child is trying to play in your energy. A child is trying to kind of piggyback into the, the, the new journey that you have. They want to ride your coattails. I feel like... No, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Because I'm not going to put it out there. Nice try, enemy. Nice try. Nice try, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to put that comment that was put into my head that I heard an echo of. And I'm not going to say it because I'm not going to put you out. I'm not going to, you know, build you up in this message and then tear you down. The enemy is going to try to do every little sneaky trick he can. So be careful when you're watching other tarot card messages. If it doesn't resonate, do not accept it as part of your message. And if you are a person that struggles sometimes when watching tarot that you it's hard to separate what's your energy and what's not your energy it's always a best bet to just take a break walk away from tarot for a little bit and then clear your head talk to god and then come back if you if you feel like it you know what i mean i don't even watch tarot every day i watch it just to you know watch a couple of friends out in the collective i watch to kind of just make sure that the energy that i'm feeling is real similar to the energy that's out there um and just to see how accurate that i'm posting stuff and i've just met a lot of wonderful colleagues out in the field and, and it's just a pleasure but I don't watch every single day, and I don't think anybody should. I feel like you should be out enjoying your life. This is complete and total harmony within yourself. This is love. This is a bond. This is kinship. This is a personal relationship with God. A 10-10 kind of life, 10 cups overflowing you with love and divine harmony and peace and bliss. This has like Garden of Eden written all over it, right? Maybe your pop's wife's name, like your grandma's name was Eden. Maybe Eden is a place that, that you think about a lot. Maybe you are in, I don't know, there, I'm seeing like a, I'm seeing like a futuristic planet that is called Eden, but it's not a garden. It's a planet. It's weird. But I feel like this planet may be like, five to seven times the size of earth and that there's this abundant rainbow perfect blissful you know bunnies are lying down with the lions and everybody's a vegetarian and we all have fun and you know sunshine rainbows and ponies like I feel like it's a perfect place but it's not a garden it's a planet that's bizarre I've never seen that before I feel like you're destined to go to Eden. You're destined to return back to the garden. And the garden is a planet. While your enemy is the one that is put out. Who? I am, um, I'm going to stop. And the reason being is because you know what's happening. You know you're winning. You've taken complete control of your life and the circumstance and the enemy is not going to be able to compete with you. Everything has been exposed. Balance is coming into your life with temperance here. And the sun card to finish off this message for you. That purity, that happiness, that joy. That's a double sun card confirmation for you right there. This is a beautiful thing to look forward to. This Eden style of life, this wonderful utopia energy, I feel like it's something that you have always wanted. 
but never thought you would ever be able to see. I feel like your pop is somebody who resides in an Eden place. And instead of going there first, he decided to hang back and help you in spirit from a different reality, an alternate reality. You know what I mean? Like when you're in spirit, when you're in that 5D, it's, it's powerful. You can do a lot of things. You can manifest even in that state. And I feel like the love of this man, making sure that he's protecting you as much as he can, he's going to battle for you because you're going to battle for God's kingdom. And he says that you will always have his, his sword. He's an old timer. You'll always have his sword. I feel like this could even be an ancestor from even a hundred years ago. Maybe who fought in like a revolutionary war. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Um, this, is, this is your story. It's not mine. <laughs> so uh, put the energy where you need to for it. But um, this, is, this is fantastic. So when this spell work comes at you, it's going to instantly boomerang back. As long as you are staying in a state of positivity, high vibing. I don't see you even looking at the enemy's direction right now. You are you are just very happy. You're very free. Like you feel free. I feel like you have such a wonderful relationship with God. It's just getting deeper and deeper and deeper. You're a completely new person. You're a new woman. You're God's princess. You're his little princess. Ah, oh, did you ever read that book? A Little Princess? I love that book. And I love the movie, okay, right? But I love the book even more. Oh, so sweet. First scripture out, it says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. James chapter 5 verse 16. This is an interesting message coming out here. I feel like maybe you are going to be praying for this false person right now before they even come at you. That's how a light worker does it, guys. We go to war before we're attacked and we do preventive measures. To stop the enemy, to heal the enemy, to deter them, to take them off course. I do that very often. I pray for peace to come on people's hearts that I know are going to be attacking me. And surprisingly, they have peace on their hearts and they never attack me. Pretty cool, right? It's all in how you... It's all in how you set up your intentions during your prayer time with God. So while you're talking to God, because I don't, I don't think you necessarily pray so much as you have... An ongoing, rolling conversation with God that just doesn't stop. And that's very, very healthy. That's very different from how you used to pray. Because you used to take time to sit. And you would meditate for like two and a half, three hours. And you would just be in deep, deep prayer. Now, I feel like you're never like, dear Lord, please, blah, 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 blah. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I feel like you used to pray like that. And now... It's just a rolling prayer and it never stops. And then you're constantly inserting an amen or thank you, Jesus, or Jesus, come on, help me out here. I mean, like, but it's a rolling conversation like you and I have maybe, you know, or you and your family or you and your children have. It's beautiful. But that prayer is powerful and you know how to fight without ever lifting that sword. You have people in spirit that are willing to be your sword and shield. Your angels have been designated to you and assigned to you specifically to fight for you. So if you feel that this person is coming in, pray against shapeshifter energy from coming in. God, if their intention is not pure, please block them from coming in to me. Have them stumble over their own tongue and have them be exposed for who they are. Angels, 
Please don't let any of these individuals approach me. And if somebody is trying to trick me or deceive me or they have ill intentions for me, I give you permission to handle it as you and God see fit without my interference. And man, my angels love it when I give them those thumbs up, right? They say I'm too soft. And I agree, I'm too soft. They do my butt whooping for me, right? And that's what your angels are there for. Your angels are there to do the things that you're not capable of. I took a vow, I took an oath to never cause a human harm or take life in any form. I vowed to God that I would never take a life. I can never willingly do something to hurt somebody, mind, body, spirit. It, it just is not part of my DNA. But my angels can, and they will. And when I'm pushed to a point where I don't want to pray for these people anymore, that's when I know I've had enough. And I say, God, I've turned the cheek maybe 60 times in the past year. I'm done. I no longer wish to be walking around this mountain. I will no longer be generous with this person and allow them to play with me. You know, God, please handle this or talk to your angels and ask them. They will help you. They are waiting for you to ask them. And I promise you, you're not going to have to light a return to send can a return to sender candle. You're going to start seeing some major changes around you. When you pray dangerous prayers like that and you give control to God and angels to do as they see fit with the people who come and attack you, who you want to know why I'm so protected, why this channel is so protected? Because of those kind of prayers. So that's why I'm teaching you those kind of prayers right now. So that after this message, when you go to bed at night, I want you to feel confident that when you talk to God and angels before you close your eyes, that you're going to wake up as a completely different individual. Immune from this nonsense for the rest of your life. Who's ready for that? Who's ready to be free from the toxic, false persons of the world? Throw a heart down in the comment section if you agree. I love me a heart emoji, any color. <laughs> All the colors. I don't care. I love me a heart emoji. The more hearts down there, I know you got this message. And I know how different your life is going to be in this season. And I'm proud of you. So, it says, Jesus said, is it not written in your laws? I have said you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture can't be set aside, what about the one whom the father set apart as his very own into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said, I am God's son. John chapter 10, verse 34 through 36 Man, when I say that you are God's princess, I mean quite literally that you are a child of God. That's what this scripture is talking about. Being a child of God, a daughter of God, a son of God. Just like Jesus. We all came from him. We are all his precious children. I feel like maybe a false person is going to try to convince you that you shouldn't pray like that and you shouldn't say that about yourself just because you have God in you and they can't understand it. They're going to try to separate you from God as any way they can. So maybe they're going to say you shouldn't call yourself a princess or God's little princess, God's precious daughter. You shouldn't say that. There's the scripture to back up why you should be proud that God calls you his little princess. That's a huge compliment. He could call you his little butthead. <laughs> you know what I mean? His little ankle biters. <laughs> no, you're his little princess. You're his precious gem. You're his precious diamond. Look at you. You know what I mean? It's gorgeous. He says, call to me and 
and I will answer you and tell you of great and unsearchable things you do not know. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Viewer sponsored in with a 333 confirmation for that royal, royal child of God that I'm channeling in today. This is your relationship with God as I had mentioned it earlier in this reading. How confident you are. How you can look in that Pandora's box and not be harmed by what you see. Because you are what's left in Pandora's box. You are the hope that is being poured out on the world. Shining away to Jesus Christ. The truth, the light, the Lamb of God. You know what I'm talking about, chosen ones. You know what I'm talking about, 144K. I don't care which groups you're in. You know I'm telling you the truth. And I know you feel it resonating deep down inside your bones, all that resonate with this message. And I want you to know that you're not alone. So if you have to call out to God, know that he's going to answer you. And if you have to call out to your fellow light workers to back you up, you put that call out there. You need prayer. You throw that prayer down in the comment section. Anytime you see a message that resonates with you, if you need help, I want you to be confident to ask for that help in the comments. Not just on my channel, but everywhere else. And I want you to test this theory. If you reach out and you ask people to pray for something specific that you're being guided to ask for prayer on and maybe you're too ashamed to ask for prayer maybe you are struggling with an addiction of some sort maybe there's a sexual addiction that you're trying to break free from maybe you're addicted to food or drugs alcohol maybe you're addicted to something toxic that god is trying to separate you from maybe if you need help in an area you could say hey i really need prayer if anybody could please just send out a prayer for me to help me with my relationship issues, my addiction issues. If you want to be specific, the better. And watch the light workers and the secret earth angels all around the world pray for you. And if your intentions are to receive that healing, you will receive that healing. Karmic individuals who do that will, will get an even worse fate than I care to mention. But if you are a sincere individual looking for help, test that out. Try God. Call out to him. Call out to him in your head. Call out to him out loud when you speak. Call out to him in a general comment section of a, of a reading that resonated with you and ask for help and watch how quickly God sends you that aid. It's spectacular. I love testing God when it comes to that kind of stuff where people are like, yeah, but what if I call out to him and he's not going to hear me? What if he doesn't answer? And I'm like, I can tell when God is with me even when he doesn't answer. Sometimes his silence is an answer and I understand it because then I'm forced to go within and then I, I'm talking to him again. I'm getting my answer. You are that person that is going to be able to communicate with him on the 3D and the 5D. There is no barrier between you and God anymore. You are one. You are connected. You are complete with the Holy Spirit knitting you back together. Sealing up all of the cracks inside of your soul and safeguarding you in the future. And it's spectacular, guys. It's very poetic, too. Yet it feels silky. Your relationship to God feels like silk running through my fingers right now. And it's it's luxurious it's it's smooth it's effortless it's it feels like you're floating in like a zero gravity tank and there's just no worry no pressure you're weightless it's fantastic and guys i'm excited about this energy for you i'm excited about the prayers that you're going to pray after this message that, um, on friday evening and those kind of selfless prayers and powerful prayers that you're going to be doing, like I said, you're going to wake up a completely different person. This is going to be a, a complete transformation. 
and I'm really excited to see how this goes for you. So no matter who you are, where you are, I hope that this message resonated with you. I hope that you guys got something out of it. I hope you learned something today. I feel like a lot of you did. And just remember that we're all here for each other too. So reach out if you need anything. Thank you guys. Take care of yourselves and God bless you all.